Welcome everyone to another episode of the SVT podcast. I am with S and V. I'm sorry. I don't even know my own initials. I'm with V and T. Um, Sam is out today. He's uh, sick. So uh, yeah, his assignment is to get better. Yeah, yep. I, I think he's just playing hooky from work, to be fair, to be honest with you. So it's fine. It's whatever. It's whatever. Yeah. You know, we all do we, it. I've done we, it. We see you, Sam. We see you. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? I'm good, man. Uh, yeah, just uh, really excited about uh, the World Cup. And I'm really excited about my fantasy leagues. I won all three games this past week. I'm in a mood. Um, yeah, it's a good one. So, all right. yeah. And I'm How looking doing, forward Tim? to hearing about it. <laughs> nice yeah so what we got on the dock today um i know we'll jump into nfl here we're gonna touch a little bit of the nba uh touch on base with our good old sharkies down in the ice tank over there and then we're uh, gonna definitely talk about the world cup a lot of stuff happened today uh especially on the usa side so uh with no further ado uh vince jump right into these scores here all right so in the nfl we had uh three games on thursday buffalo beat detroit 28 25 Dallas beat the New York Giants 28-20. Yes. Minnesota over New England 33-26. We jump over to Sunday where Miami beat Houston 30 to 15. Carolina with the surprise but not really a surprise over Denver 23-10. Jacksonville beat Baltimore 28-27. Washington they're they're in it in the playoff hunt, man. 19-13 over Atlanta. Cleveland over Tampa Bay in overtime 23-17 uh, Voldemort is coming back for them This uh, the quarterback <laughs> that shall not be named uh, he's going to be coming back this next week so I'm sure we'll get into that next week Cincinnati over Tennessee 20-16 New York Jets beat Chicago 31-10 the Chargers over Arizona 25-24 the Raiders in overtime beat Seattle, gave me an assist. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Vegas. 40 to 34 over Seattle. Kansas City beat the Rams 26 10. And on Monday night, Pittsburgh outlasts Indianapolis 24 17. Now we turn to our boys. Philly over Green Bay 40 to 33 in a barn burner. Tyler, just, how are you, how's it going, man? Good, man. That was a Feeling good game. Better? I- I do want to point out in case anyone's listening and being like Monday, how do you have Monday night score? Um, if you haven't already noticed, we didn't record on Monday today. We're recording on Tuesday. Uh, apologies. Uh, Turkey uh, gave us that uh, trip to Finn and we got a little sleepy. So we're recording this a day late. Um, as for my Eagles though, that was a wonderful, terrific game. Um, I honestly was not expecting Aaron Rodgers to do what he did in that first half, especially with a broken thumb that he's been dealing with. Uh, So shout out to them because he's working with food scraps as he is every year because Green Bay refuses to buy him a wide receiver, even though they had one and didn't want to pay him. So um, shout out to the win. All I need for you, Vince, I need the 49ers to lose this week. I need Seattle to lose. And then I also need Washington to lose. And my Eagles will clinch a playoff berth this week. Or you wait a week and clinch it when the Niners win this week. Mm-hmm. How are your Niners doing? Uh, they won 13 nothing. But uh, the last, the, I saw a fun fact. They played the Saints. They won 13 nothing. The Saints, the last four times they've been shut out, the last four times in their franchise history have all come at the expense of the Niners doing the shutting out, man. That is been- wild. I haven't the Niners shut out every team they played since like week seven in the second half. It's yeah, yeah. The Niners are playing immensely well on defense. Uh it le- it leads to a bit of a mm-hmm. snore fest on offense sometimes, which kind of was what this was. Elijah Mitchell got injured. He's gonna be out for a significant amount of time again because that's what Elijah Mitchell does. He burns too bright, man. I, I like he he's amazing and then he gets hurt. And I, I don't know. He's, he's Icarus, man. He just girl bosses a little too close to the sun, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> girl bossing <laughs> too close to the sun. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, the Niners get the job done. They're seven and four. They're in the driver's seat of the NFC West. I'm stoked for it. Um, and uh, uh, honestly, they, they, they got another matchup with Seattle coming up. And that's going to basically decide the division at this point. I didn't think the matchup with Seattle was going to decide it because I expected the Rams to be better. I expected the Cardinals to be better. I expected the Seattle Seahawks to be dog shit, but it turns out it was the exact opposite. 
and the NFC West wasn't the NFC best this time. Uh, like we thought they might have been going in. Yeah, I mean, it, the tables have flipped. The NFC East is the best, which everyone thought that was going to be the worst. So yeah, NFC uh, beast instead of least. <laughs> how the uh, turns have tabled. Yeah, my uh, my, how the turntables <laughs> and a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I do want to get more into this. I just I just wanted to touch base on a couple things that I've noticed here. Um. Indianapolis blows that game on Monday night uh, all because of maybe a coach who is inexperienced in every aspect of coaching. So uh, that was a snooze fest of a game in my opinion, but Pittsburgh pulls that off. I'm super happy for them. Um, Also Chicago had a quarterback appearance that I thought was hilarious. Nate Peterman was the quarterback for the Chicago bears today. (laughs) Two injuries. Oh man. (laughs) And That's I just want to I touch have not base heard in a long time. I know that the, the, the uh, Sam isn't here tonight, but I just want to make a dig at his former head coach for the uh, Oakland Vegas Raiders in John Gruden. He did a w- one to a hundred best quarterbacks. And number one on his list was Nate Peterman in that, in that one draft. Right. Yeah. Yes. And he picked yeah. Nate Peterman number one who proceeded to have Six turnovers in one quarter for the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> oh, so good. So good. <laughs> all of that, you know, that, that that's what I like to see out of a out of a quarterback is um total lack of ability to contain the ball, you know, to his person. <laughs> what good is a quarterback if he doesn't just give it to the other team? I mean, I know, right? I mean, yeah. what, what good are they? Yeah. You gotta be you gotta be willing to give and receive. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. I will say Jimmy Garoppolo continues his run of not turning the ball over. That the was one of half. his big things, you know, yep. uh, that, that I, that I've been harping on is, you know, he gets the happy feet and then he makes a, a dumb Jimmy play. He hasn't really made the dumb Jimmy plays too much. And when they have, he's gotten away with it. So, I mean, they're, they're playing well. I'm, I'm real happy for him. I look forward to next week. You know, Fun stat about going. Jimmy G. Okay. In 59 games. I don't know how they pulled this stat out of their ass, but in 59 games, Joe Montana was 37 and 22. Steve Young was 40 and 19. Care to guess what Jimmy Garoppolo was? I I know this stat. uh, So I already know the answer, but Tim, do you have a guess? Um, Where, where, where is Jimmy Garoppolo versus Steve Young and Joe Montana in terms of win loss in 59 games, 59 games, Steve Young was 40 and 19. Hmm. And Montana was 37 and 22. Yeah. Uh, that, that first year was absolute dog shit for, uh, for the Niners uh, under yeah. Joe Montana. So kind of so, pulled them down a little bit. I'm going to, th- I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to throw the dart at the board, not knowing what the hell any of it means. Yeah. How many <laughs> wins? Say, just, just guess how many wins. In um, 59. 20 to uh, 80 <laughs> or whatever. Like, we're, we're, we're talking about uh, we're, 59, uh, in 59, 59 games in 59, in 59 so, games how many of those have been wins for the for jimmy garoppolo as the niners quarterback i guess 20 okay it's okay. 40 it's what? 40 it, and 19 he, he, he matched even, steve young he's even with steve young in terms of wins and losses that is the wow. craziest thing i've ever seen yeah i i know what that means i mean jimmy's won it, some games here and there but that wins, is all defense yeah wins are a team stat they're not a quarterback stat that's what that proves you know i mean wild. Uh, he's part of the team but it's not only a quarterback stat it's it's a full team statistic is what wins are so um top to bottom uh, they, they they take care of business when jimmy is quarterbacking you know um sometimes in by necessity on defense. Uh, but other times like Jimmy has gone out and won some games too. So to his credit, I mean, yes, I will give I mean, him that. He did, abs- he did absolutely. win some games, you know, he did win some, but it's and, a very inflated defensive stat. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, if Brock Purdy was the quarterback this year because of the Trey Lance injury, I, I, I don't know where the Niners are. They're probably, you, mean you wouldn't be sitting Purdy. I would not be sitting Purdy <laughs> if, if not. Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy was our starting quarterback at the moment because of the Trey Lance injury. So um, mm. uh, it ended up, it was, you know, according to the process, I didn't think it was the right decision to keep Jimmy, but they got lucky be, in a weird way because the injury happened to Trey. They had a starting caliber quarterback ready to go and already knows the offense. So 
You he know. did get super lucky. I will admit. I yeah. think all of that us. That is yeah. lucky. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, massive. In the that worst shoulder injury way. was the best shoulder injury that could have happened to the 49ers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because he'd be, I mean, he would be five and six for six and six for Carolina right now, maybe. You know, True. and and like like that's probably. I mean, we talked about it, you know, months ago where he ends up, and it turns out he ends up staying in San Francisco and leading them to the playoffs again. I also don't want to write off here now that I'm seeing the picture being kind of blown out for the NFL. I don't want to write off that New Orleans might be a, a destination area for him as well. Um, I still think that it's going to be Tennessee because they're just so God awful. Um, but I, uh, I, I am kind of leaning towards New Orleans might also be looking at him because that whole situation against the San Francisco 49ers, they did not have a good quarterback. Yeah, Andy Dalton it, is not it, the future. It, Andy Dalton is the holdover guy that, you know, he at this point in his career, he's a spot start. But he's a backup quarterback who can give you a spot start and give you value. But if you keep putting him out there, that's more game tape for people to break down and more chances for people to, to fuck his shit up. You know, I agree. It, which, I agree. of course, is the professional term for it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's in the dictionary of it's in the dictionary. Of, yeah. 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 Um, fucking his shit up. Yeah, it's in the urban dictionary. I know, I know. It's in the urban dictionary. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. One. That's right. <laughs> um, I don't have any more us on NFL. I'm willing I, to jump to football. Are you yeah, ready to jump that's, to football? That's right. Association football, um, Let's or as we call it, soccer. Soccer. There was or a as, uh, as they used to call it in England until about the 70s. Soccer. This um, is true. That's yeah. a, that's another point. Um, this is true. Yep. I uh, I was watching a video when uh, England played uh, USA. It was like right before the game, and there was a chant going on called "We uh, We Call It Soccer," and they just kept repeating. I was like, I feel secondhand embarrassment. I don't really. I was just. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's it's cringy. Yeah, as Mary. the kids say, it's cringe as fuck. Um, I guess we'll touch into it. Uh, England USA draw nil nil for those mm-hmm. uh living stateside zero zero. Um. Also, the first game against was it Wales? Was it Wales? Yeah, yeah Wales it was zero zero. It was a one one draw. One one. Sorry, one one. Um, so USA needed to win this game against Iran. Um, there was no tie. Obviously, there was no losing to move on to the next stage. And I literally stopped working for twenty minutes. Probably nobody up my job listens to this podcast, so thank God. Um, I stopped listening for or stopped working for twenty minutes. That game was on edge from literally the kickoff to the end. Like, I know you caught the tail end of it, Vince, but it was high pressure, high strung. And in my opinion, the chances that USA had, especially in the first half, they probably should have won 3 0. And there was a chance right before the half to go up 2 0, but they went right. offside. Right. Tim Weah uh, went yeah. offsides. What did you, I didn't get a chance to see that highlight. Mm-hmm. What did you think? Was he off? Yeah, he was. He was off. Okay. I, okay. I'll be fair. I mean, it was like a smidgen, but they call it so good on all right. sides that I, yeah, they, I'm like, willing if, to believe them. If you if you have a toenail or fingernail offside, you're offside in soccer. That's yeah. the one that that's one of the main differences between offsides in soccer and offsides in hockey. If you can keep a toe onside in hockey, you're still onside, even though most of your body is cross the line. As long as piece of you is still on the line, you're good. Whereas right. in soccer, you get a hair offside, you're you're offside. So, um, yeah, that's a little rough. Um, I, I I'm I'm glad to hear that you thought it was offside as well because I didn't um I didn't get a chance to see it. I just saw people freaking out um about it in the aftermath. Uh, I was working in the office, so I didn't I I couldn't even like have it on on the TV like in in the background or anything. Like I had to actually like work because my bosses are around. But I. I delayed my lunch as long as I possibly could. Like, like I think if I had waited four more minutes, I would have gotten a lunch violation. Um, so like I took it right up to basically the edge. So that way I could catch the last uh, 30-ish minutes of soccer. Uh, yeah. Before. So uh, I, to I recap caught the 10 quick, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. To recap real quick, um, in the 32nd, 36th minutes, something 37, along those lines. 37. 37. Okay. For Pul- um, Pulisic. Pulisic or Pulisic uh, scores a goal. Uh, definitely injured the shit out of himself trying to score that goal, which proves to be the only goal that they score against Iran and end up winning that game uh, 1-0 to eliminate Iran. Um, 
shout out to Iran, man. Like they definitely were not supposed to be even sniffing the round of 16 and um, they did everything they could. You know, I, some people were going to talk about the last few minutes where, you know, they were falling in the box to try and get a penalty so they can get a, you know, a, a penalty kick and whatnot. But um, That's I'm not mad at it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not mad at it. It's, it's win or go home. You, you do everything you can. You yeah, know, it, 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 if it was the, if the tables were turned and USA players were, trying to draw a penalty in the box like that, I would, I would be 100% for it. So I'm not, I, I, I have no problem with them trying to draw a penalty, you know, um, I agree. I'm glad that the refs didn't buy it. You know, I, I'm glad this, the ref saw what was happening and just let it go. But you know, it's, it, it's always nervous when somebody goes down in soccer uh, because you, you wonder, are they going to give that penalty? Are they going to call it the right way or the wrong or the other way? You know? So it's, it's always nerve wracking. Um, especially when the stakes are this high, the cow is on the fucking escalator. The stakes are high, man. The stakes <laughs> are high. I don't know if, if, cause you know, like in, in basketball and, and pretty much every American sport, um, they take the referees that are the best of the best, except for Angel Hernandez. And then um, they, uh, <laughs> they use them to be, to do the world series or things of that nature, you know, I will say that the first game that USA played against Wales, that officiating was horrific. I mean, it was definitely one-sided, you know, the referees were not willing to give USA any, you know, whistle of penalties, nothing. It was very one-sided in my opinion, where this game was completely well-balanced in my opinion. I think officiating was even across the board. I didn't have to worry about anything. I just think that, uh, I think that if they could to pick officials go to the next round this would definitely be the crew that would want to go to the next round yeah uh these guys uh, didn't uh, uh they um they did the first game of the entire world cup the qatar game right i think right. too i think i heard mm-hmm. them say that on the broadcast um so. yeah i had no problem with this uh w- with what i saw from the efficient uh, from the officials yeah, yeah definitely um so uh usa now moves on to the round of 16 or the knockout stages so no more group stages for those who are listening uh so it's win or go home pretty much every single game on the way out you have what four more wins to get to officially win the world cup okay so they, they they need to win this game then then the quarterfinal then the semifinal, and then you get the final so yeah it's four wins from here first yep. to four wins is your uh, world cup champion yep absolutely and so they're going to be playing uh the netherlands which those dudes are huge. They're a really good defensive team. Uh, 7 a.m. was kickoff. 7 a.m. is going uh, 7 a.m. Pacific time is going to be kickoff. Coverage is going to start on your TVs at 6 a.m. So um, get your breakfast ready. Strap up yeah. your uh, w- get some waffles um, to, to our listener in North Carolina. Uh, 10 a.m. for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you get a little bit of you, you get to real relax and wake up on your own terms. Not us though. Not us on the West coast, man. Yep. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. I'm ready. Uh, I will have my USA bandana on, you know, I wore my Harry Potter uh, Ravenclaw sweater today. Cause it was blue. I think I'm going to probably wear this again on Saturday, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah that's probably, rude. that's the way to go. I mean, I've no, no orange. Oh, no, no, no. Can't do orange. Not, to, not, 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 not for this game, man. Um, uh, if they do win, uh, the, the next game in the quarterfinals will be on Friday, December 9th. So um, yep. we'll be, we'll be able to talk about this um, upcoming uh, round of 16 game in full detail on our next podcast. And if, if the U S can pull off the upset and get this win, then we can talk about, who they're playing next and all, all of all of that is still to be determined you know i yeah. mean the only people that have secured uh their seating is england senegal netherlands and usa and, and that's france. because well france is secured and brazil has secured their spot in the round of 16 oh right, right, they right, haven't right. secured their seed yet they could i see what you're saying they could still be the runner up in theory. So true. Um, true. Um, I also want to touch base before we move on to the uh, NBA more round ball here. Um, another round ball, I should say. Uh, Wrexham is first in their league right now. Woo. On top of, I think they're like three or four points up behind uh, Knotts County. And then on top of that, they also won their FA Cup 
Uh, so they are now officially onto the round three where they get to pull a championship team and they're going to play Coventry. So everyone was kind of hoping that Wrexham would maybe get a, uh, a premier league team, mostly because of viewership and, you know, ticket sales and things of that nature. But Hey man, you got to take the challenge where you can get it. Coventry is going to be really tough. Uh, there are seventh in the championship league. And then they're also going to, uh, be playing Wrexham's going to be playing on the road. So they definitely have the challenges for them. Uh, I heard some great analogies. Some people were trying to figure out like, what does this mean? What, you know, cause Wrexham is not in the European football league two or the Euro football league one or the championship league. They're below all three of those. So the best way I can describe this to you, it would be like Duke playing the Sacramento Kings. That would be the best representation of it. You know, there's talent. Uh, yeah. But- I don't even know if I would say Duke. I think I might go a level lower. Um, whatever the, uh, junior college equivalent of the, the junior college national champion. You yeah. Know? Th- th- that, that's what I would say compared to playing um, not even the Kings. I would, I would pick maybe, uh, eh, maybe the Kings. I don't know, but you know, a middle of the road type team. Yeah. Yeah. Something so, like that. Um, that's FA cup is slated for January 7th. Uh, that's a long ways down the road. So I'll just be keeping an eye out on the uh, fixture tables and see what place uh, Wrexham is going forward. So, yeah, I mean, they've, they've won looks like five of their last six with a draw thrown in there. So they're yep. playing well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, who else is playing well is the golden state warriors. Uh, what are these scores we got going on here? Is this, uh... okay. So this is the past week. Um, they won against the Clippers 124 to 107. They won against Utah 129, 118. And then they went into Minnesota and just, uh, took a shit in their salad, man. They won <laughs> 137 to 114. Um, they were, I, I, I kept joke, t- uh, texting the rest of the group that, um, up oh, there on pace to win 180 to 118 or whatever the hell it was. Um, uh, they, they didn't quite get to 180, but I mean, basically you get up by 20 points and then you end up winning by 23. So basically you trade buckets back and forth the rest of the game. I'm good with that is what, it, you know, what ended up happening. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Looked they're good. currently um, playing the Mavs right now. Um, they have made this into a close game. I think I didn't see the final score, but I want to, uh, not final score. I'm sorry. Halftime score. Um, they were down by a lot. Uh, they've officially tied up the game for those who I don't know if Vince is watching it or not. So I don't want to spoil it here, but no, not yet. they have tied the game. So um, that game will be pending probably after this podcast, most likely after this podcast, definitely after this podcast. So, so uh, have the warriors woken up is, is, a little is this bit. What we're hearing? They, they, they're, they're waking up. Um, they've, they, they've climbed up to eighth in the West at this point, there are 11 wins, 10 losses. So they're above 500 they're they still they still got to figure out how to win on the road they that that one game against minnesota was on the road so you like to see that they're playing in dallas uh, need to pick up some more road wins so hopefully this is the um the turnaround they've won Uh, two games on the road this one or i'm sorry minnesota and and houston was the two games that they've won on the road so far so uh houston you, you had to win that game they're they're almost dead last in the west here and then also uh Minnesota, that's a good test, uh, especially with those two big guys. But um, this is going to be a bigger test. Uh, Dallas was the team that we obviously played in the playoffs in the uh, second round last year. So they're definitely coming out like gangbusters. Uh, looks like the Warriors finally woke up. So it should be fun. That's I'm going to watch the rest yeah. of this after this. So, how are the uh, Sharkies doing? Um, today they're up 1-0 against uh, Montreal going into the third period. So let's see if they can hold on for that win. As for the rest of the the rest of the week, not so good. Uh, they lost at Seattle eight to five. They 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 go home, play the Kings. They lose five two, and then they lose to Vancouver four three at home in overtime. They're currently seven wins, thirteen losses, four draws, um, draws four tie uh, four overtime losses. What sport are you in? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm really focused on World Cup right now. Apologies, hockey fans. Uh, they're currently seven. Uh, the Sharks are currently seventh in the Pacific. Um, that yeah, Vancouver so, game was 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 brutal, man. That was yeah, a brutal that was, game. That was rough. That was that that was a tough L to take, um, for sure. Uh, yeah. So they're they're ahead of the Ducks, and they're ahead of the Ducks by a, well, it looks like about five points. So um, 
just stay ahead of the ducks for now. Um, worry about the rest of it when you can. Um, we're on duck hunt watch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> duck hunt watch, baby. Um, uh, the Kraken are up to second in the Pacific. So they're, they've really, they're, they, they figured it out this year. So you know what, it, you know what it is. I mean, I should probably get some, some, uh, some, some royalty money coming my way. Cause I talked all this crap about them and they heard me and they were like, I can't let that guy talk about us. So yeah. they played better. Eight, eight, one and one in their last 10. So, um, it's all in spite of they, me. It's fine. It's fair. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're on absolute fire right now. Um, if, <laughs> uh, it, NBA jam rules, man, they're on fire. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, uh, they definitely came out of left field or some would say from downtown. <laughs> from <Huh>? downtown <laughs> um i don't have any more hockey news i did have a hot take or i guess uh i'm sorry i apologize an extra point um i wanted to point out that the astros the worst team on the baseball planet have uh, gone ahead and signed jose abreu um which kind of pissed me off because he was talking to the padres and was really hoping that would work out but uh you know, I guess the rich can't always stay richer. You know, sometimes they got to let one go to another rich team. So it's fine. It's whatever. It's cool. Now you and I get to hate Jose Abreu in a Houston's outfit. So that's fun. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, Because, you know, it, I, I I feel this affinity toward the White Sox. I don't want to say I'm a fan. Um, yeah. Because, you know, they're they're a, 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 an AL rival, so to speak. But I I get it. They're the kids. They're the kid sibling of the bigger, badder national league club. And so like, I kind of feel this like brothership, this kinship with the Chicago white Sox, you know? And so I kind of, if, if the A's can't do well and my Mets can't do well, I kind of like, you know, I hope that, you know, the white Sox are at least doing all right. So, uh, you know, I check in on them from time to time, unfortunately, you know, now Jose Abreu is on the villains. So, uh, um, I don't know. Fuck off forever, <laughs> but also best of luck. Um, you know, uh, he, he earned his bag. So, I mean, but yeah, that, that, that it circles back around to, you know, being pro player. And if you can get paid and you're not, you know, selling, you're not uh, selling out wire. your soul. You're not, you know, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, or, or wearing signing, a, a wire, you know, wearing a wire, mm-hmm. you know, as long as you're not cheating, you know, get your money, you know, I'm fine yeah. with that, I guess, in the, in the long term. So, All right, fellas, do you have an extra point or anything? I, I honestly do not, man. Uh, this Thanksgiving was uh, it was busy. So I, I, I drove yeah. out to my sister's and uh, helped her, you know, mash some taters and nice. hung out with the nieces. And uh, they brought out the, the um, in the movie Big, the, the piano the, the, that you step <laughs> on. Oh, um, the floor piano. Yeah, the floor oh, piano. Had one of those. Um, my, uh, um, my, my mother bought it for my sister. So um, I have two questions. And her kids. So yeah, I, I have two questions for you. Um, is one of your family members, um, Tom Hanks? And my no. second question to you is, how big is their house to have one of those pianos? It's not that big. It, it's it, it's the um version that you buy at Target. It's like thirty bucks or something like that. So. Yeah. And you like um, roll it out or something. Yeah, you roll it out. It's <laughs> it, it's it's probably like eight or ten feet long. So it's you know, uh, it's probably about eight feet long. So you, the and the kids they were all under four years old. So they're just they're just stomping on it to make the noise. They're not actually trying to play. Um, Mary had a little lamb or chopsticks or whatever else. You know, they're <laughs> they're just they're just going for pure chaos and which is awesome and fun. And then um, it becomes bedtime and so. The oldest one, who's like three and a half, tried to sleep on the piano, and I tried to very slyly turn it off with my toe while I'm standing there talking to her, uh, my sister. So, so that was fun. You know, you should have you should have rolled her down the keys. You know, so it made that <laughs> swiping noise. Yeah. Did you guys try to do the Jaws theme? Come on, tell me you did. No, the I, I, I I couldn't I couldn't even start to play a song because the kids were all over this thing, man. Like. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the kids were it. having fun, and that's really what's important. I don't need to play my silly little song on on the uh, floor piano. So, you didn't want, that was you didn't your want to play chance. Mary Had a Little Lamb? <laughs> no, no, I, I I would have loved to have played Mary Had a Little Lamb, but uh, but the the kids were having more fun with it, and that's what it's for, you know. It's for the kids, you know. Yeah, uh, Uncle <laughs> Vinny is a good uncle, so. <laughs> 
did you do anything for uh for thanksgiving tim uh we uh no we had a small gathering at our house and you know it was it was nice it was very cozy uh it's always nice when you don't have to go anywhere for thanksgiving so i i you know i dressed up a little bit but i could have been in my pajamas and would have been just fine so nice it was nice. nice it was nice i ended up uh driving to san jose went to my aunt's house so uh that was fun but afterwards we went to this restaurant or i'm sorry this bar called 55 south in san jose and uh they have this thing called sipping santa and they, it's like tiki drink tiki drinks in like christmas cups and we ended up buying two mugs and like a tall glassware that was like themed out one of the mugs was like a santa claus and like with a surfboard and like shorts the other one was like a mermaid santa claus so what's like I don't know, just gotta be like, he looks like a mermaid and his tail turns upwards and like the middle or his back is like a big old cup. So, so yeah, that was fun. I've been looking forward to it. We tried to go last year, but uh, they didn't have any mugs. So we made sure that we went early this year and to make sure we secure those mugs. So officially have gotta, that. Gotta so, secure the bag, man. Gotta secure to. the bag. I gotta to. see this mug. Do you got it on I, you? <laughs> I, I can get it. I would show it to you, uh, uh, at, at the end of this podcast because you know viewers can't see it but if you're curious <laughs> sipping santa is literally everywhere i uh i'm on a tiki page and read it and some guy went to one in new orleans there's definitely one in hawaii there's also one in like ohio so they're everywhere it's just google sipping santa there's one in arizona as well i know this for a fact so check it out oh, it's fun okay. it's great sounds amazing all sounds right good, yeah. um so I just want to say uh, good luck to Team USA on Saturday. Uh, I'll be watching early, 7 a.m. kickoff. So um, uh, get get your waffle makers out, man. Let's uh, let's do this big. Um, I don't know. I don't <laughs> find, know man. find us a waffle spot. I will go. I tried um, to go. Uh... Shit, it may have to just be my house and I make waffles. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so so are you going to be the donkey in this scenario? In the morning, <laughs> in the morning, making waffles. I'm making waffles. <laughs> I'm making waffles. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all uh, right fellas well you guys uh it's time to wrap up here i just want to uh sign off here and have uh vinnie do the signature which we got tonight all right so you can always find us online on social media at svt sports pod on instagram you can send us an email at svt sports pod at gmail.com please slide into our dms uh, we also still are on Twitter because Twitter still exists right now. So, but we don't know Somehow. how long that's going to last. Um, uh, they might not be on Apple much longer. Um, I heard. W- watch out for yeah. that. Um, so there's some drama brewing there. So that's why I'm just basically giving you the Instagram stuff. Uh, that's going to be the easier place to find us. And uh, yeah, Instagram's not going anywhere anytime soon because there's, you know, not chaos happening there <laughs> um yeah so uh like i said slide into our dms we look forward to interacting with you all right fellas you guys have a wonderful night and i'll catch you guys next week all right Later. see ya. <laughs>